Welcome to the fourth lesson of uh, the EMA Trial Mentorship Series. So today uh, we'll be dealing with uh, leverage and uh, lot sizes. We'll be dealing with leverage and lot sizes. But first of all, we will start with uh, the lot sizes or what we call volumes, trading volumes. <coughs> Uh, a quick recap we dealt with forex forex being <coughs> the trading of currencies it's done online we buy and sell currencies in the form of currency pairs we have a code and a base all those things are they have price so with them having price leads to the bid and the ask and the difference of the bid and the ask uh, being the spread that's the spread we left off at spread so right now well okay we also added brokers we say that we talked a little bit about them offering you leverage and a platform to trade so a platform will have your volumes your stop loss or take profits it will have many things so right now we go back uh, to the currency pair say euro usd you must know that uh, these currency pairs are sold or bought in units you have to take out contracts so that's where the the, the whole uh, concept of leverage comes in that's why i said uh, brokers uh, they have uh, the advantages you have to have leverage you cannot just gain access with uh, your your little capital to the market no if uh, we didn't have brokers offering leverage and requiring a, a certain margin of your capital then we wouldn't be able to trade because uh, truly speaking your ten dollars wouldn't manage to take out a contract of uh, this currency pair you will not be able to buy or sell that's where leverage comes in leverage from the broker that's where it comes in but then before we go there <coughs> let's talk with uh, the volumes account volumes or the lot sizes whichever you may call it it's fine so let's start with uh, the lots the first one we have is a standard we have three types okay but then there were uh, uh, in some rare cases whereby you find four types but then right now we'll be focusing on the, the three there's four yes you can see there's four but then we don't uh, focus on the fourth one the first one is the standard the second one is the mini the third one is the micro then in some cases but then I've never seen a broker offering this one there's a nano there's a nano volume so we will be dealing with uh, these three we will cross out this one so okay we have uh, the three volumes we have the three volumes which are the standard they are volumes or lots depends on how you call them we have the standard we have the mini we have the micro final one which is the smallest i place them in uh, their uh, in their sizes like from biggest to smallest biggest volume to the smallest volume the biggest lot size to the smallest from biggest to smallest so let's uh, start with the standard what you should know about the standard volume or standard lot is that it represents a hundred thousand units 
of the base currency which you will be buying or selling and uh, it's it's a return now there's a volume of 1.0 or this is the lot size of 1.0 so in general remember we have a different currency pairs we have different currency pairs and uh, they have different weight if i may put it in simple terms they have different weight but then in general one standard lot you see as td one standard lot is equivalent to ten dollars per pip ten dollars per pip I hope I hope I'm making sense. For a, a standard lot, one standard lot, one peep will be equivalent to ten dollars. Let's uh, let's get into detail so that you understand. We are busy with a standard lot, right? Standard lot. We are seeing for a standard lot. One pip a movement of one pip will be equivalent to ten dollars. I hope you're getting this for a single standard lot. One pip will be equivalent to ten dollars. So I, I hope uh, if you're inexperienced, you don't just get to your account, then open a standard lot. Remember, standard lot is this volume, point zero zero. That's a standard lot. This is your volume for a standard lot. So, Remember what we're doing here. We'll also be doing on demo, so to practice and also see practically what's happening. So uh, we said one pip is equals uh, is equal to ten dollars, and it's uh, it's a general, it's uh, it's, uh, it's across the board because uh, USD JPY uh, one pip might be uh, around uh, nine point eight dollars and. Uh, GBP, JPY might be around 10.6, you know, it's a difference uh, according to the weight, there's something called a weight of a currency pair, but then in general, the number should uh, be around this area, around $10, so just know that uh, one peep will be equivalent to $10 for one standard lot, then two peeps would be equivalent for two peeps for uh, uh, one standard lot to 20 just like that and three peeps would be equivalent to 30 So the, the, this is for the standard lot. Now we move over to the mini lot. The mini lot. The mini lot. This is equivalent uh, to 10,000 units. Remember the first one, the standard lot was equal to 100,000 units of, that's 10,000 units of uh, the base currency. So it will be written as 0 0.10 or 0 0.1. And uh, for a PIP, one pip for 
will be equivalent to one dollar for a mini lot one people will be equivalent to one dollar uh, might be different uh, with uh, regards to the currency pairs remember it uh, pairs with the gbp and euro you have more weight than the other pairs so you might find that on gbp uh, it's uh, one pp is equivalent to around 1.5 usd then usd gpy might be 0 0.9 so there might be a slight difference but then for general purposes it's one dollar they all meet uh, at one dollar so let me further go to explain you see the volume is 0 0.10 the volume for a mini lot for a mini lot and the okay so uh, one pip is equivalent to one dollar so if you gain or lose a pip you will gain or lose one dollar then two pips is equal or equivalent to two dollars. Three pips that's three dollars. And uh, remember, the, the, these uh, examples which I'm, I'm giving are for a single or one mini lot, or one uh, standard lot, one micro lot. So what you will do if there's two mini lots, if there's two mini lots, that means you will further multiply by two. So that will be $2.00 for one pip here will be four dollars for one pip Ish, this is but then i hope you, you you get where i'm going so let's move to the micro lot the micro lot the micro lot micro lot is equivalent to uh, a thousand units this is the smallest one remember we are not going to talk about the uh, thousand units of the base currency <coughs> so it will be 0 0.01 in volume micro lot it will be 0 0.01 in volume and in this case uh, one pip movement will be equivalent to 0 0.1 cent it will be equivalent to a cent or no 10 cent it's 0 0.1 it's 10 cents that's 10 cents per peep. It's 10 cents per peep. So let's get into further examples. You see the volume is 0 0.01 for a micro lot. For a micro lot. So this means that. Uh, for a single peep movement, one peep will be equivalent to 10 cents or 0 0.10 dollars. Sorry, it's two peeps. Be equivalent 
to I don't know if uh, I'm using the correct uh, form of currency or should I just write cents but then I'm making it easier making it easier to understand for beginners won't skip from dollars to cents but then if you if you we were to use the right thing we shouldn't be putting a dollar sign front but then it still makes sense okay two pips will be 20 cents or 0 0.20 dollars uh, three pips movement of three pips at zero point uh, then there it is remember it's for uh, one micro lot so if it's two you multiply by two at the end you multiply by two at the end if it's three micro lots you multiply by three then that's how your calculation should go <coughs> so we also have different types of accounts in accordance to these uh, volumes we have a standard account brokers will offer you uh, either standard account or a mini account or a micro account so uh, their pip movement might be the same but then as you've just seen due to their volume size that means uh, they won't generate the same amount of uh, money profit or loss whichever you happen to make so the number of pips might be the same but then due to volume to their volume or due to their uh, size uh, they won't generate uh, equal profit or loss so since we are done with the accounts and the volumes we will move over we will move over to a leverage we'll move over to leverage so what you must first know before we get into financial leverage leverage as it is is some sort of a boost it's a boost it gives you uh, an advantage it gives you an, it's, it's there to give you an advantage but then at the same time it also has uh, its disadvantages remember uh, sometimes uh, too much of a good thing is actually bad for you so it is the case with leverage if you don't have any experience if you don't have any experience leverage will act as a double-edged sword it will work for you or against you so it's a boost and because it's a boost it doesn't mean that uh, once uh, the downsides appear then leverage is no longer in effect it will be in effect the moment you apply leverage to your account it will boost your profits it will also boost your losses it won't work uh, one way so leverage in finance in simple terms because uh, I don't want to be talking about uh, the units the, the amount of uh, contracts you have to take out and all those things remember you're still beginners we don't want to lose you at this stage don't want any confusion but then like I said if you are more focused on the uh, the terminology and how it comes about then you can inbox me we'll talk premium right now we are dealing with what's important how you should understand it and how you should apply it we are focusing there so leverage for your account will act as a as a boost for your account because remember at the beginning of the video I see that a, a mere ten dollars without any leverage cannot open a position in the market but then thanks to leverage we are able to take out uh, more contracts or more positions 
than we can initially take out. Leverage is provided by your broker. I also mentioned that leverage is provided by your broker. So that means uh, <clears throat> for a certain ratio, you will be required to bring uh, a certain capital into your brokerage account. Then your broker will add or will borrow you funds. It's some sort of a loan, but then it's not that loan in, t in types whereby... Uh, if you lose then you will have to go around borrowing more money to pay back your broker no they there will come a time whereby if uh, you are losing your broker will do what we, uh, we call a margin call if your margin is getting depleted beyond uh, below a certain percentage your broker will perform what we call a margin call in the olden days, they used to call you and tell you to deposit more funds because you are running low on funds. But then uh, nowadays, since uh, brokers have many clients, they cannot uh, call. And sometimes uh, in situations whereby uh, your money goes in seconds, there's no time for them to call you. Seconds, then your account is blue. But then what you will see for a margin call is that uh, your account will reflect it will flash a certain color to show you that uh, your funds are depleting, say, oh, madam. So it's either you deposit or we will be forced to close your, your balance. You will have to close your positions, you will have to close your trades uh, so that they cannot lose further. Remember, you are coming in with a small percentage, but then due to a, to a leverage, you can boost that percentage with uh, ten dollars you might come with your ten dollars then with their leverage they might be able to borrow you funds so that you can take out positions with which are worth almost a hundred dollars so when those funds get depleted in order for them to not lose more they have to call you to deposit because uh, they are holding the end of the bargain. You have to hold your end of uh, providing capital for margin. So they will perform a margin call. And if you cannot uh, add funds at that time, then they will have to close your positions. That's why you'll see uh, what we call a blue now account, meaning you cannot take out further positions it can be in a negative it can be at zero zero or it can be at uh, around uh, uh, one dollar balance you know the the overall balance won't allow you to take out uh, further contracts or further trades so uh, okay uh, the leverage as we see it, 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 it boosts you like in this case from ten dollars to hundred dollars it allows you to take out uh, more units of a currency so what you will do is you will have to open a margin account or just a simply trading account because uh, all brokers offer that account broker offers you a trading account it will come with a certain leverage you can adjust it according to uh, your needs and your experience so uh, what you should know is that as your leverage increases you also increase uh, the ability to open more positions or to increase your lot size with experience that means you can make a uh, greater returns from small deposit and at the same time you can also lose those uh, deposits in a short space of time that's how uh, it all is so you have uh, different types of leverages. It's in the form of a, of a ratio. Leverage is in the form of a ratio. Leverage. It's in the form of a ratio. You have uh, different brokers differ offering different types of leverage or different uh, leverage ratios. We have 1 is to 50 or 50 is to 1. It's the same in both cases. There's uh, 
okay let me just start with the smallest there's one is one this is the smallest you can find one is to ten one is to fifty one is two hundred one is to two hundred this is what you will see well, let's say four hundred five hundred six hundred uh eight hundred and eighty eight one thousand two thousand three thousand some even go to the extent of saying unlimited one is to unlimited so you can imagine uh, how that would be so as we said so this means that your boost will be quite small as compared to this one which is safe if we consider that you're a beginner this one is probably more safer because it won't allow you to take out many positions because if you have no uh, experience or no guidance uh, it's going to be suicide to just uh, go on the market and execute without any knowledge so it's better because it will allow you to take out positions with the uh, smallest lot size as possible but then as you increase your leverage then you also increase uh, the amount of positions or the volume which you can use to trade as you increase your leverage <coughs> also increase your volume so this increase in leverage should be directly proportional to your experience the more you gain experience that's the more you can increase your leverage don't start by increasing your leverage if you aren't progressing with regards to experience and knowledge or guidance please so as I said uh, yeah, increasing leverage allows you to have a, a boost or an advantage in the financial market <clears throat> it allows you to gain an advantage because it allows you to take out more contracts on a currency in Forex because we're dealing with currency pairs it will allow you to take out more contracts or more units on a particular currency pair than you would or you normally would for your account size or for your capital I hope this all made sense so uh, leverage can also be <coughs> can also go hand in hand with uh, your capital you know, uh, let's say if you have a higher capital the amount of positions or the volumes you can trade using this leverage will be fair enough as compared to the same person who's using this leverage but then with a smaller account size or capital okay let me just uh, let me get an example let me give a practical example of leverage we have a person a here Let's see person one then we have p2 person two here uh, they all they all operate uh, if I can say they all operate uh, with an account of let's say two hundred dollars <laughs> but the, the difference is their leverage uh, this person is using one let's say let's just take one is to 50 then this one is using uh, let's say one is to 500 they both have the same account size person one uh, might be limited by their broker to open a trading with an uh, overall volume of uh, let's just say zero might be 0 0.05 the lot size the maximum lot size they may open on that account this 200 
remember that you're using the same $200 account. It might uh, be it might be 0 0.05. Remember, we have a difference in leverage. Uh, but then the, the second one, <coughs> person 2, find that since their leverage is increased, they are able to open a position of 0 0.5. Zero, or using a lot size of 0 0.50 I hope you can uh, get the idea right now if you went with me uh, all along I hope you can get the idea right now so this is how uh, leverage works and uh, we might try using an example with account size uh, let's go uh, with the account size right now we have uh, P1, P2. Right now the leverage is fixed. Remember, okay, let's say we use 1 is to 100. 1 is to 100. I'm sorry for that. Okay, yeah. Let's say 1 is to 100. That's the leverage for both these people. But then their account sizes differ. See, this one has an account size of ten dollars this one is an account size of a hundred dollars so uh, their lot size will still be limited due to their account size you might find that this person will be able to open them uh, trade with a maximum volume of uh, let's say zero point uh, zero five. From there, it will start saying not enough money. I think you if one saw that message, not enough money. Then uh, this one might be op able to open. Uh, volume of maximum volume of 0 0.50 but then they still have the same level just that right now there's uh, different account sizes so I hope uh, you got the factors which surround uh, leverage and uh, account sizes and all those things which I explained so yeah that I think that's it for okay we can also add uh, your margin your margin but then okay i will have to do it in a set this has been long enough we'll have to do it uh, in a separate one it will be part of the next lesson the margin but then i think i explained a bit a bit about it when i talked about the margin call and all those things but then i'll try to touch on it in the next lesson yeah.